everyone, my name is Mark Allen Lovewell and seated right next to me is Molly Canole. That's right. We're vineyard <laughs> folk singers, on the, we live here on Martha's Vineyard and we welcome you to Sunday at Sea. Welcome. We're especially excited about tonight's show because we're doing some surprise things Oh, for you. we're getting technical. And we're, not, and we're, we're gonna <laughs> unveil those later in the show. So please stick with us uh -huh. because this is, this is technological huge. Technologically we're, huge. And we're also very excited because we have a nice live audience. Let's hear from those folks. Yeah, isn't that nice? That's so nice. We are so glad. Now, you know, we start our show with the Ukrainian National Anthem because we are thinking of people near and far and holding them in our heart in many parts of the world. And that's just kind of a symbol for how we're doing that. And we are a, a bit of light here in, in some darkness. And that's what we're here for. To provide some light and you're going to tell us a story and we had now no, aren't no you? idea i had no idea that when we started doing mm -hmm. the national anthem that it would be so long so many you know what we're into more than a year this is a big deal and uh so we keep doing it so right. we got a lot of uh so this morning if you saw this morning's show I was out in a pumpkin patch. Oh, yes, you were. <laughs> I was. I was in a pumpkin patch. And uh, it, I, I... I think you were trying to be one of the pumpkins. Cause you and were when I got back in the car with the my dirt. gear, I said to myself, I said, I could have showed you all more. But maybe what we'll do, we'll go back to that pumpkin patch next weekend. I loved it. Dude. It's so, there's so, there hundreds so of them. They're all around it. And it's like, you know, have you ever hear the story about folk singer or the musician gets in front of his audience mm. and he's told just think of your audience as a bunch of cabbage heads <laughs> that's what i learned in folk music 101 well where i was this morning i was surrounded by all these pumpkins and they and they they all look so handsome and some of them i bet look they were pretty. paying attention <laughs> anyway so we're uh, we're, we're approaching we're coming close to halloween and and we told you last week, we're not about scaring people, okay? We're, we're just, we're, we just, we want to honor and remember and pay attention to the, to what's supernatural and, and it's not all bad and That's it's true. not all scary. Um, I want to share with you a song that, that, uh, that I've been doing for a really long time and uh, it's called The Ghostly Crew. It's a good one. It's a wonderful story out of the 1800s when the fishermen were sailors and they went out in schooners to go ca catch and harvest the fish of the sea. There were no engines. It was and quiet. It was quiet and you'd be <laughs> sailing in the, in the darkest, darkest part of the night. And you, you know, you'd have your lights on, you'd have your, you know, you'd have your lights, your port and your starboard light on which was then, of course, a candle or something, something that illuminate you, but there's no lighting around. There's no lighting to speak of. And you're out there in the open ocean, miles from home. 
and you don't have radar, you don't have sonar, you don't have any way of knowing. You just got the stars, right? You got the stars and, it, and, and, and amongst many of the captains, they had an instinct that was beyond measure. And so this is a song about a schooner out in George's Bank and a man talking to his audience, talking to you about, about his journey, about his, about his experience. With, I mean, I'll tell you the whole story because I think I want you to I want you to be aware of what's going on here. He's he's the, he's on the night watch. He's in the night watch. He's all on deck by himself, moving along, and there's a serious concern that he might run aground somewhere out there because they just worry. He's a little worried that they're going to run aground. And uh, oh, let's see what happens. And then all of a sudden, it's, huh? Okay, the audience is saying be The audience louder. needs Mark to be louder. There you go. That's unprecedented. <laughs> How's that, folks? Does that sound any better? There you right. go. <laughs> so anyhow, so the idea is that so they're out there. And this is Halloween season, so why not? You know, why not do this song? And and he all of a sudden all these sailors come aboard, fishermen come aboard and take over sailing the schooner. How we doing, Carol? We good? There is a green box in front of Mark. I've got that from the audience too on Facebook Live. There's a green box around his face. Oh, something about the camera is oh, showing up. Oh, the camera's picking oh, up. Oh my God, wow. that is human light. Well, I can fix that. Oh, he can fix so that. So is that the center? So that would be the center? Which one? It's whichever one he's it's using. It's whichever. It must be oh, the center Oh my God, one. we can fix that. Oh, he can fix that. See? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> It's not clean HDMI. That's right, because know, yeah. that's right. You know what it is. It's focusing on us, so thank you for telling us that. See, there's always HDMI. these technical things that we, we deal with, but there is a solution to that, so thank you for that. Yeah, I see it too. It can I focus guess. on us, but we can make the box high, that's right? That's we can make it high. Can do, we can do this. <laughs> see, this is a live show. This is what we go through in live shows. <laughs> It's live things. Yeah, that's right. Meanwhile, I'm going to tune up a little bit because that will help too. All right, got to have a little fiddle in this one too. Oh my God, we're going to have to work on here. <laughs> I'm going to turn off face protection. Wow, you look great. <laughs> All right, so I don't know how it's focusing, but we'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> All right, it's gone, but hopefully it's focusing. Have you, everybody All right. That? I yeah. see mommy. All right. Yay. <laughs> All right, let me go to the other one. All right. Maybe the other one doesn't too. have it. Do you think the other one has it? Turn that one off too, okay? I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but anyhow, hold on here. <laughs> For some reason, yeah, we'll get one, it. We'll get it. This one has it too. But that one has it too? We'll get rid of it. It's not St. Patrick's Day yet. Ah! <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll keep that for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> All right, hang in there, audience. We're still with you here. We're with you. We're with you. We're fixing it. Thank you. Thanks for hanging with. We're going to have some cool things coming up, so it's, so it's definitely worth hanging with us. we got some cool uh, things. All right, that's it. All right, we better go right into this song, honey, because otherwise we're going to run out of time. <laughs> Let's do it. We got it. <laughs> I'm gonna put three finger picks on. <laughs> plus I have a flat pick. All right. Notice how Molly told me to be quiet, just get into the song, so I'm being quiet. <laughs> oh my gosh, here we go.
It's an amazing story. It was written in 1874, 1874, and I tweaked story. it a bit. <laughs> it's a good story. It's a really good story. Um, so this is a big deal time of year for for the fall fishery.
And the one fishery that rises above them all, and you've heard me speak about this in the past, is the bay scallop fishery. And I have here in front of me a bay scallop shell. That one looks like it's fresh dug up. <laughs> <laughs> and here are some Still really... Still got the dark sand on it. A pretty one. Yeah. And That's been sitting out in the sun for a while. That's right. Yeah. Very pretty. So pretty. Um, we love bay scallops, and if you've ever had one, you know you treasure it. Delicious. And, uh, I want to. I want to make an offer. I want to make an offer. I'm. I'm interested. I will sell. I will send you. I won't sell. I'll send you. This is for free. <laughs> I'll send any one of you who writes me a letter to tell me a maritime waterfront story, or even for your love of a waterfront. And you email it to either Molly and I. The first 20 letters, I'm going to send you a Bay Scallop show. Aww, for so free. So I'll, I'll cover the cost of postage. <laughs> but I, I just, these, are, these things You'll are... You'll send a pretty one, They're right? fragile and a treasure. Mm -hmm. and, and they're all different colors. That's the cool thing, too. Yeah, and, they, and people make Christmas ornaments out mm -hmm. of them. I have a few on my tree. Hang them from their tree. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, you folks have been good to Molly and I, so why not? So, <laughs> and some of you are enormously talented when it comes to writing, writing. And, and I invite, I invite you to, I mean, you know how to email us. You, you know where to find our email address. It's, it, it, anyway, On the idea websites. is, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, it's the first 20, okay? This is over at the end of the month, okay? It's not like we're going to be stragglers or whatever. And, uh. And I'm also thinking that, you know, we're, we're not famous like Taylor Swift or anything, so we're not going to get thousands of letters. <laughs> we're just, a, I just, the first 20, oh, write, write us a letter. Write us a letter and send it, and we, we, we might read it, a part of it aloud, or parts of it aloud, or might read it all aloud. That would be fun. But I, I just feel compelled to connect with you folks in a wonderful way, because the bay scallop fishery is, is a treasured fishery, and it was once... A, an abundant fishery in the waters of Long Island, the waters of Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and Cape Cod, Rhode Island. And the season has started around here, and people are out there catching them, and that's uh, good and news. I got a, you know, I, somebody, good one news. of my friends sent me a picture of the bay scallops that eat harvest yesterday morning. Yay! Because the recreational season <laughs> is open. The commercial season hasn't opened yet. Nantucket is celebrating. They had re their recreational fishery opened a few days ago too. So are they? And he's got a song about him. <laughs> We're gonna sing about him. I love this song.
fresh out of there Watch the gulls drop the shells from way up there Holler drags feel the rope tighten Hear that heaven root go slow We'll find a better place where the eel grass in the shucking shack, Susie's empty shells are piled way up high. No one can match her rhythm, her wit, and her welcome smile. She's the fastest shucker that anyone knows. No one can match the speed. shell back in his palm and he turns to the crowd we're all sitting there so calm he says this you just heard it from someone who can tell a tale We and do. It is such an important fishery. We do. And I can speak that personally, deeply within me. <laughs> Molly and I did not go bay scalloping last year. I know. It was sad we didn't get to. The reason was is because there wasn't enough. We were concerned right. about the juvenile. There were so few out there. They wanted to give them they another did. year to grow, right? They, want, they wanted to leave the adults alone so that they'd, we'd also be leaving the juveniles alone. Because Bay Scallop, the animal, only lives 18 months. He's a fragile fellow to begin with. That's right. And if he has a bad year, he's, he's in tough shape. So the good news is that this year, we're hopeful, our fingers are crossed, we know that Edgartown's going to have a fishery. We know that, we know that uh, Nantucket is having a commercial fishery. But we're a little nervous about where I live, which is in Tisery. It's going to happen. Right. Hey, can I say hi to some of our friends out there? Oh, please, I'm yeah. seeing some, some people here visiting us. We got Caroline and Connie here. Hey, guys. We got Toby from Canada. Toby from Canada. We had a Toby last week here in person from Vermont. They might be coming in here, too. So 
Cool. And Pam's here. Hey, Pam. Nice to see you. Oh, that's so, good. I know. Pam. Thanks. I'm sure. I know there's others who are just being quiet, and that's okay. We love you all, whether you're you're texting or you're you're quiet or you're just listening or you're here or wherever you are. We're, thank you for being here with us. Uh oh, we got a go. runaway harmonica. We got an errant <laughs> harmonica. <laughs> harmonica is the only instrument that you can drop. It makes it sound better. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, this is one of my favorite songs too. Do I say that? In, I might say that in, before every song. I might. I kind of. I'm kind of guilty of that. What's that? <laughs> Saying it's. This, oh, I love this song. This is my favorite when <laughs> in front of every song. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, it's true. <laughs> Aww. I love um, this one. Yeah. So. This one's called "Leaving of Liverpool," and it's about a guy going off. He's going far away, and he's leaving his lady friend. It's a sweet song. Whaling ship. That's right. It's very sweet. He doesn't know when he's going to see her again. Could be a while. That's right. Very you know, it's sweet. a long trip. And you notice the ship's going to California. That's right. It's called The Leaving of Liverpool. And uh, the whole whaling industry was across the waters. Far away. People right? all over. Farewell to you, my own true love. I'm Shipping out on a Yankee whaling ship, not Davy Crockett.
reason why we're singing this song tonight because we're thinking of a certain somebody that we might hear from in a couple of minutes who's been on a journey so we're gonna sing something called off she goes actually we're not singing it we're gonna play it we're gonna play off she goes <laughs> we're off he goes we're not discriminatory yeah the story you're gonna hear <laughs> is it right after this song mm -hmm. oh boy yeah mm -hmm. oh boy. right after this song <laughs> we got a great moment for you all that's right here we go. This is the exciting part of the show. This is so exciting. So Brad Wartman, as many of you already know, is, is the man behind the curtain that makes this show work. He's, He's the magician. He is the Wizard of Oz. He is a brilliant, <laughs> brilliant man. That's right. And He's our tech guru. And for those of you who've been following us the last week, you knew, you've discovered how much he loves a solar eclipse. And this is a man who just doesn't, you know, like, pour over the photographs in National Geographic of solar eclipses. Oh, eclipse. no. He goes he a lot further than that. He doesn't just go into the library and pull out books on eclipse. Oh, this no. This is a man who has a reputation, a significant reputation, for getting out of the house, getting in his truck, getting in whatever, and going to watch an eclipse. Not just watch it, though. He's got gear to record it and show it to the world. It's amazing. He, what he did was amazing. But we shouldn't tell the whole story, right? We should hear well, from the voice of Brad. what we want to do is we want to introduce him to you, and through the technology of this amazing world, he's out in Oregon, Salem, Oregon. Running the show from Oregon, so, across the country. Brad, but now we're going to hear us? from Brad. There's a little delay with Facebook, but... Is he coming in nice? Yeah, time? yeah, I'm here. Oh, <laughs> let's give Brad a hand! Molly, it's, uh, it's really nice to be here and. Uh, and as unaccustomed as I am to public speaking, <laughs> uh, I will we'll take a stab at this. But I first want to say that, uh, you know, I've been thinking a lot about uh, your comment about Taylor Swift. <laughs> and, you know, my, uh, my daughter, our daughter and our granddaughter went to see the Taylor Swift movie the other day. And, you know, they and the, have my granddaughter sit through a three-hour movie. Wow. Is... Uh, extraordinary. <laughs> so it, it made me think that, you know, there's there's the Swifties, you know, who love Taylor Swift. And, you know, I think the Sunday at Sea folks, uh, you know, should come up with the name. I'm, I'm going to toss one out there. I'm going to say we should call ourselves the Sassy Seafarers. You know, <laughs> something like that. But uh, uh, I want to hear from, from all of you in the, in the uh, Sunday at Sea world there in the audience. And out on Ooh, Facebook contest. and wherever else uh, <laughs> you pirated this broadcast from, to because uh, you know nothing's like good like a good pirate story. 
So, oh, Arvard. Uh, uh, but <laughs> anyway, so to, to, to talk about what, what Mark was uh, alluding to is, yeah, I, my, uh, my wife, Martha, and I, and our dog, uh, Riley the Wonder Dog, have been on a two-week uh, journey, so to speak. And what we were doing was to uh, go to watch a solar eclipse. Uh, it's an annular solar eclipse. Oh, look at he's And showing you pictures. can see a picture of it here uh, for those of you on the live cast. And uh, it was uh, uh, an eclipse. I had last seen an annular eclipse in 2012 in uh, eastern Nevada. And so this was the second one that I've seen. It started, strangely enough, pretty close to where I live. However, there was just uh, no way that I was going to be able to see it uh, in Oregon in the middle of um, October, which is pretty wild and wet here. So ah. what I did was uh, we ended up, this is a picture of our trip, and so we drove from Salem out into the middle of Utah and to a place called Capitol Reef National Park. And Here's a, here's a photo of our rig. This is uh, Cousin Eddie, the, our camper, and Horrible, <laughs> our, our truck. And this is a picture with Riley, the Wonder Dog, camming Aww. it up for everybody. <laughs> but um, so what we did was we got to, we kind of went eastward uh, looking for good weather, which is always, there's two things that Eclipse watchers are, are uh, known for, which is they, there's much angst about location and weather. And so, you know, we, we started looking for a place to go. And so we ended up here at Capitol Reef National Park. And they just so happened they have, uh, they had quite a big uh, deal showed up for doing the eclipse. And they had this beautiful poster that they had put together Ooh, at Capitol great. Reef. And if you've ever been to Capitol Reef, ever even never been, it is just simply gorgeous. It is just a gorgeous, gorgeous place to go, to go visit. And so, we um, we got set up. We actually camped outside of the park in what they call a dispersed area, which is the equivalent of the cheap seats for <laughs> uh, uh, for park park visitors. And uh, there, I, with Eddie, I set up my my telescope and all my live streaming gear, and I brought that all along. And with uh, the help of Starlink, we we were able to. Uh, broadcast, uh, do a live cast of the, of the whole eclipse. So cool. And I've got a couple of pictures here to show you. Uh, the first one is of just, this is a picture from the telescope and you can see at the very top, there's a little bit of it flattened off yeah. and that's what we call first contact. And that's when the moon first enters, the, starts to enter the surface of the sun. And now this whole thing lasted three hours, and I have the whole three-hour video out there, and I also have a, a shortened nine-minute version of this for those who have uh, short attention spans. <laughs> but uh, uh, so at to totality, which is the next picture I'm going to show here, we had about uh, nine, almost 90 percent coverage of the sun, and. So that's what, and this is what makes an annular eclipse uh, different from a total solar eclipse, because the moon is a little further out in its orbit and it doesn't quite cover all of the sun, but we were pretty darn close to getting full coverage, and it's this beautiful ring of fire effect is what we call it. And it was, uh, it lasted almost, what was it, four minutes and 43 seconds, which is pretty long for an eclipse. And then we had about another hour and a half after that. And then this is what a photo of what they call last contact. And if you can see down on the very lower left corner of the mm -hmm. sun, this image, you can see that again, it's kind of clipped off and that's just where the moon was exiting. You know, so it was about a three hour long event. And you know, I was really amazed with how many people saw this and not to be left out, were our good friends, Mark and Molly, and <laughs> their photo of them watching the eclipse, of watching me watch them watch the eclipse. So, <laughs> anyway, that was so uh, fun. that's just a really brief summary, and, and just 
just oh my gosh thank Here's you a picture of my darling wife and i at uh, lehman caves oh, at so great cool. basin national park in eastern nevada which is where i saw the, the 2012 eclipse so, oh, so in cool. a nutshell there it is oh thank you brad that was brad so thank you great hey, brad. Hey, brad. <laughs> now, now i want to hear from everybody how many people think Mark should come in, Mark and Molly should come and join us when we watch the total solar eclipse in April of 2024? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would be yeah, nice. There you go. <laughs> be a long awesome. Time. Brad, thank you very much. Uh, the, that was so cool. You're welcome. Thank you. And I am so fortunate to know Brad. Brad and I go back m multiple years in our involvement with the Fisher Poets Gathering in Astoria. And he is just, he's a champion of collecting the songs and stories and tales of, of commercial fishermen through the years, through the Fisher Poets Gathering. And the thing is that, you know, these are folks who stand before audiences of, of hundreds of people and they share their story. And, and, and it, it, to see it live, it's a wonderful experience mm -hmm. and to be a part of it. But to know, if it wasn't for Brad, and people like Brad, those stories, those recordings, they, they'd be, they, no one would have a recording of these amazing tales that are shared. And they're wonderful. And, and so Brad is an integral part of the storytelling of, of the nation, of our national commercial fishermen. He's a big piece of collecting that story. And so it's always an honor to talk to Brad because Brad shares the same enthusiasm for life and astronomy <laughs> that I have. Yeah. And we interpret it different ways, but we do that energy, that enthusiasm, that sparkle in the eye uh, is, 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 is with Brad as it is with Molly, you see, and with me. So anyway, thank you, That's Brad. Right. That what was a wonderful. treat. That was a treat. Now we got another song we're gonna sing in honor of Brad coming home. And this is, uh, we, we sang it a debut last week, Home Again, my new song. Um, but we thought it was appropriate for Brad to get his own, his very own dedicated uh, time of, of singing Home Again. Because he's home again, and we're glad he had a safe trip and glad he's back. <laughs> so we're going to do that for him again. <laughs> We'll do instrumental. You want to set a rhythm?
Thank you very much. Oh my gosh, we're doing all right now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, that was fun. Let Thank me get you. rid of this, Monica. <laughs> you got a necklace. Aw. Thank you guys. Thank you for all the sweet So calls. let me just remind you, you, for those of you, remember those base scallops? Shells, I got a few for you. That's right, that's right. Oh, we got some other stuff we gotta read, don't we? You, we? you wanna read, read this time? You wanna read it? You wanna read it? I, I could read it. I you can read it, you take a turn this all time. All right, this is, we got this all written down because... We don't wanna leave somebody out. We don't wanna we don't forget leave something. anybody out here. And this is a big thank you, really, what we're doing here, because the magic of the show is not driven by us. It's driven by you. It's driven by you. All of you, every one of you. As we close out this show, we want to give a big shout out to our audience, Woo! both live <laughs> and in person. We couldn't do this without you. We'd also like to thank the sponsors of our show, our supporters on Patreon, the Federated Church of Martha's Vineyard, for providing this wonderful venue and lastly, the Fisher Poetry Archive, that's Brad, for their technical assistance in directing and editing this show. You can watch our videos on Facebook, YouTube, MVTV on Martha's Vineyard, or Capital Community Media in Salem, Oregon. You can also listen to our podcast on Amazon, Apple, Google, and Spotify. I don't know, maybe we are Taylor Swift. <laughs> it's really, we just, he, he mentioned Taylor Swift. I mean, she's a wonderful lady, and it's amazing the magic that she creates in the world around her, but it just says something to every one of you and all of us, is that live music is precious. It has value. It is important. Wherever you live, Whoever you follow, live music is a There's key ingredient. Like yeah, That's right. I, we were, Molly and I did the did the math over the weekend. We had enough. For oh, we're good. we're good. We're good. We did the math between the two of us. We have eight CDs out. Mm -hmm. Eight CDs, and we're contemplating another one. Oh boy! And and the and the thing <laughs> is that recorded music is wonderful and fine, but getting us live for all the little uh, errant notes that I throw in here and there. That's color. It's, <laughs> adds realism. Uh, absolutely. Why would you want me to be perfect? Oh That's my God. Boring. That's boring. Anyway, the good news is this. Thank you, every one of you. I know I'm repeating myself over and over again on the uh, same topic, but you're it. <laughs> you're it. Yeah. Without you. We're just sitting in some church off the coast of Massachusetts doing our music. <laughs> Without you, with you, we're a community. We're That's friends. Right. We're fellowship. We're talking to each other on Facebook. We're emailing. We've got followers on YouTube. We're, it's, it's anyhow, you're a treasure, Thank every you. one of you. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. And you know what? We hate to get to this part in the show, but it's that time. we got to... Join in and sing in our song that y'all know. If you've been coming here, you're going to know it. And if you haven't, well, you're going to catch on real quick because it's an easy one to follow. Called Rolling Home. So I've been a folk singer doing it since I was 12 years old. And uh, I can say for you, since I was in my 20s, I always finish my show with this song as a tribute to a man named Gail Huntington who's no longer around. It was but a man who told me, it, Mark, right? sing sea shanties. Nobody <laughs> else is singing. And he collected so, this one, so thanks to yeah, him we I, have I it. I learned the song from him. So we, so why not? Why shouldn't we be still singing it as a wrap up or right. thing?
one frosty morning and the sails are full of snow tighten those sheets and pull in those halyards let her off and let her go Come all young sailormen, listen to me I'll sing you a song of the fish in the sea Blow ye winds westerly, westerly blow We're bound to the southern, so steady she goes